Welcome back to Red Hawk Media. Today we're taking a look at adding enemies. And with the enemies, um, we've got a ginormous package that we've put together for you. Um, there's a custom export package, and then there's a number of scripts that you're going to have to download. So take a look at the description. Um, there's going to be a link there that will take you to a download. After you've done your download, we're taking a look at a folder called Enemy Assets. And you've got two things in here. You've got a an enemy package that you're going to be importing into Unity. And then you have a number of scripts here that you're going to be dragging in as well. So we're going to go ahead. This is the folder that I'll be referring to. This is directly from the downloads. Please make sure you uh, go to the link in the description so that you can get these scripts. They're all updated and they're improved and they all relate directly to the enemy and everything that's going to happen with the enemy. So um, let's go ahead and get started. I'm going to close this up for the time being. And I'm going to get back to Unity. And the very first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to import that package um, that relates to all of the scripts. So let's go to Import, Custom Package. And um, I'm going to navigate to wherever my download is. So I'm going to go ahead and get to, let's see here, Enemy Assets and Enemy Package. There we go. And we're going to go ahead and open that up. All right, and that's going to give us a whole bunch of stuff here. You can see there's a whole bunch of enemy animations. You've got enemy controller, um, an enemy knife controller. you got some prefabs that are put together for you. And then you've got a particle pack that's actually part of the, uh, the enemy's knife. And then you can see that you've got some sprites that you're adding in here as well. Now, if you've got already some of this stuff going on in here, um, it won't import it. It should import everything into yours that you don't have. So go ahead and click import. Okay, and that just brought everything in. Now, um, this is going to get scary for a moment here, but bear with me. We're going to go ahead and take our character script, and we're going to go ahead and delete that out of here. So I'm in my scripts folder. I'm, gonna, I'm about to replace this stuff. And just to make sure that there's no confusion, I'm just going to go through and I'm going to delete a few scripts out of here. So I'm going to go to character, and I'm going to delete that one out of there. We're going to be updating that. And the most scary of all the scripts, I'm going to go to, well, I can take ignore collision. You won't have that one. Never mind. I'm just going to delete that out of there so it doesn't mess with anything that I've already got in here. Delete. And there we go. And I'm going to take my player script and I'm going to delete that out of here. Yep. And then I'm going to take my player health script and I'm going to delete that one out of here. Okay, this is getting pretty frightening. And I'm looking around to see if there's anything else. Everything else is pretty much the same here. So we're going to leave those, and now you're going to get a whole bunch of error messages. No worries here. We're about to fix that. So now I'm going to go back over to that folder, and these I can directly drag in here. So I'm just going to open up that folder from my download, and I'm going to go to the scripts folder, and I'm going to just shift click on everything in here. And I'm going to drag that, just the scripts, and the enemy states folder, which has a bunch of scripts in it. I'm going to drag that all right back into my scripts area here. And now you're going to see that it imports all of it. And then I am good to go here to go ahead and start using this. So let's take a look at this. Oh, I've got a I've got one error because I have two switch scripts. So I'm going to just take one of those and delete it out of here. Okay. I did update the switch script. There was uh, there was an error in the last, uh, just to kind of cover this now, in the last tutorial um, for the Game Manager 2, Part 2, you added in um, switches, and you probably noticed that you imported a new switch script, and it's got some audio manager references that are in it. This new script that you just imported with the switch does not have those audio manager scripts in there. So if you had any problems with that, my apologies, but this new one doesn't have those references and it'll work out a lot better for you. All right, so let's get started with the enemy. Um, best place to begin is probably just to go to the prefabs. 
and in the prefabs now you'll notice that you have an enemy prefab here and you can begin by dragging him into the scene so we're going to go ahead and add him in here somewhere okay so we got an enemy all right now the enemy may not be sorted so the very first thing you might want to do is come over to your sprite renderer and go ahead and sort the enemy to the player layer so that the enemy is always in front of everything okay so that's the first thing now what we're going to want to do with our enemy and just to kind of describe what's going on with him and how he works and all that good stuff um, if we take a look at our enemy here you can see there's a bunch of stuff that's going on here we have this long green box here which is a collider this is his sight line so as he goes along on a platform patrolling along um, just basically going back and forth between two points on this platform the moment the character bumps into this collider it's going to trigger him to either shoot or to melee um, for his attack all right the other green box of course is his own collider so that he stands on the uh, stands on the platform and then you can see off to the side here that we've got this white box here this is his own personal UI which has his health bar on it and all of that stuff and we're about to connect all that up and make sure that it's working properly so first thing is we want to get the enemy set up um, there's a lot of different components in the enemy and if you drop down the enemy layer you can see that here's the sight thing that I was talking about here's his own knife position so when he throws a knife or shoots at you um, you've got that you've got a sword collider so when he actually does a melee it's going to trigger um, a player health effect with you and then we've got the enemy um, health bar canvas which follows him around and it shows his current health now after looking at our enemy here one of the things that you're going to realize is that when you select the enemy um, and you look over into the inspector area you're going to see all these missing scripts um, because of the way that we brought the enemy into the game um, we really broke the prefab um, in some senses so we're going to just reconnect some of these scripts so that again they can find the references to the new ones that you dragged in here so for instance the very first script that we're going to reconnect is we're going to grab in my script folder I'm going to go to the enemy script and I'm going to drag that into this first missing one that's going on here and that's the first one we're going to work on now you'll see all of this stuff is none or missing and there's nothing set up in here so that's what we're gonna begin with we're just gonna reconnect these things and you'll notice some familiar names here as we go for instance the knife position I'm gonna go ahead and drag that from my hierarchy underneath the enemy and I'm gonna drag that back in here so now it knows where the new knife position is my movement speed I happen to remember this is 4 not 40 whoa super fast anyway movement speed 4 and then we've got a knife prefab now we can go over to our prefab folder here and we are grabbing the enemy knife now the enemy knife is different it's tagged differently than the player knife so make sure you grab the enemy one we're gonna drag that in here okay now we've got a sword collider we're gonna go back to our enemy and the hierarchy and you can see sword collider in there we're gonna go ahead and drag that in there melee range now the melee range is um, whenever the player uh, gets within the melee range it triggers the melee attack now from just messing around with this quite a bit um, I found two to be a, a pretty normal number to start with and then the throw range I found 12 to be a pretty good number to begin with you can adjust these of course you can also take your sight line make it bigger make it smaller you um, the bigger you make the sight line the more active the enemy is going to be in recognizing you where you are um, right now the enemy's got a big blind spot behind him I kind of like that because it's like a you know it's a tactical advantage um, it's uh, one of the ways that maybe you can have an advantage over your uh, your enemy with your character okay so I digress um, next thing we've got a left edge and we've got a right edge now these are two things that we actually will have to create um, and the way that we're gonna do this is we're gonna go back to our hierarchy we're gonna go to create we're gonna create an empty this empty we're just gonna rename we're gonna call it left edge and capital L capital E Okay, let's do the same thing again. Let's go create an empty. 
and let's rename this one right edge. Okay. Now with the left edge, what we're going to do is we're going to position this so that it is actually on the left edge of the uh, of the platform that you've set your enemy up on. Now your enemy should be on a platform that he can freely range back and forth on. If it's a tiny moving platform, you may run into some complications with the, the platform going up and down and obviously the lack of space there. So find a, a, an open area and then you can uh, experiment with other like smaller spaces to put your enemy into. Um, but the left edge, let's go back to that. We're gonna go ahead and we're going to move that over to the left edge. Now before I click off of the left edge, I'm gonna add a component to it also. And we're gonna just add a, a collider, okay? A box collider. And we're gonna edit this collider just to look at it here. And we're just gonna make sure that it's above the platform and it's kind of overlapping the edge of it so that when our character bumps into this, he's triggered to go back the other way. And I found really that it's better to have a little bit of overlap here because these characters do have a tendency to walk off the end of the platform if you, for instance, like slide it way over to the side here and line up the right edge. Now, um, we don't want our character to step up on this, so let's go ahead and make a trigger. And then we can go to the right edge. Now the right edge, same thing. We're just going to position that over to the right edge of the platform. I'm going to bring that down roughly right around in here. Now I'm going to add a, add a component. And this one needs a Collider 2, Box Collider 2D. And we're going to edit it. And I just bring that up and whoa, somewhere around in here. Um, edit that Collider. And, you know, this... I'm being more precise than what I need to, but there you go. Now I want to make that a trigger so he doesn't step on it. And now we're going to use these as reference points with our enemy. So I'm going to select my enemy and make sure that I can see my enemy script once again here. Um, so I've got my enemy script right here. And I'm going to take my left edge and I'm going to drag that in there. And then I'm going to take my right edge. Oops, didn't want to click on that. Take my right edge and I'm going to click drag that into my enemy script so if I can scroll down come on you yeah I'm making this much harder than I need to alright and there we go so now enemy is all set up with all these things um, all the references are there we should be in good shape let's go ahead and give this a test here to see what's going on and uh, see how that works okay here we go so now the the enemy comes into the scene, and you can see that he's idling, okay, same as your character, and now he's uh, patrolling. Now the patrol and the idling is all set up on a, uh, it's set up on a randomizer actually. So the randomizer will vary the idle times, it'll vary the patrol times, but he pretty much will go back and forth. And you can see our left edge and our right edge are working. He's actually hitting those and he's bouncing back and forth. So he looks pretty good there. All right, now let's go ahead and attempt to interact with him on this. So um, I'm going to go ahead and click back in here. And let's see. Um, oh, I may have to reconnect some stuff. I did. Uh, okay, so <laughs> moment of concern there. We've got our player, obviously, who we uh, reintroduced the player script for. We may need to go back over to the player, and you can see that uh, your player has some missing scripts on them. Okay, and uh, it's looking for your player script, and it's looking for your player health script. So let's go ahead and drag those on there. Sorry about that. So you're probably having the same issue, and you are probably like freaking out right now. But let's go ahead and get that cleared up uh, very quickly. We'll just take our player script. Uh, let's go ahead and grab that. And we're dragging this on here. Okay, we got our player script, and then we've got our settings. You can see that the knife prefab is missing, so let's go ahead and go back, grab our knife prefab, drag that in here. Okay, and now you've got everything else set here. Don't worry about the sword collider right now. If you don't have the sword collider, um, we'll cover that in an upcoming uh, upcoming episode here, because you're going to want to be able to give damage to the enemy with your 
with your melee attack and I just don't want to cram too much into this one tutorial. Now the next script that we need here is we need our player health script. So let's go ahead and grab the player health, drag that in here and now we've got that all set up and it's already picking up our UI, our health text, our death UI, all the stuff that we did previously. You're also probably seeing now that there is an, an immortal time that's in here. What this is, is it's an amount of time that after taking damage from the enemy that you will actually, for two seconds, you'll, bl you'll blink on and off and you won't be able to take damage during that time. So you can kind of pick and choose what activates your immortal time and your player health script, um, but it's there, just so you know, and it's a new feature and it's added on. Now, um, let's go ahead and see if that kind of fixed some of our issues here and make sure that we're all good there. And let's go ahead and hit play. Hey, and that's much better. Now we can move, all right, and make sure that our script still works, hey, where our switch works, we've got that. All right, and I jump up here, and now we've got the enemy. Now you'll notice right now we've got a couple problems. The enemy, first off, I'm bumping into the enemy, like I'm having collision with the enemy. The enemy is going to push me right off the end when he uh, gets over here, and the enemy is not attacking me at all. Okay, so I need to get the enemy so that they are actually interacting with me, and they're going to start taking that life away. So that's our next thing to fix here. First thing to tackle is probably the enemy site so that the enemy starts to see us. Um, that's a pretty easy one to fix. So um, with our enemy selected, we're over in our inspector here and we're looking that we have, hey, another missing script up here. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna take enemy site. We're gonna go to our script folder. We're gonna go to enemy site and uh, we're gonna drag that into there, sorry. Um, so I take enemy site, reconnect that with this missing script that's over here, and now you can see it brings up a few things here. We got the script listed, and then we have our enemy. Now this is going to be the reference point for any enemy that you add in here. So we're going to go ahead and drag enemy into here. And what that's going to do is immediately it's going to take his sight line and it's going to make it active so that whenever the player interacts, um, he's going to start freaking out. Um, if he's within the throw range, he'll start that. If he's within the melee range, he'll start that. So let's take a look here. We go back after making that connection. And we're going to jump up there in record time here and jump in and boom. Oh no, bullet's falling. And we still have the collision issue. But you can see now he's way more active here. And yep, he's trying to melee me too. I'm within the melee range. I can jump over him. See, he's got that blind spot over here. He can't see me. And now he's gonna turn around, boom, he starts to shoot. He comes up to melee. Okay, and you can see all of that is working the right way here. Okay, and it's already taking life from me if you didn't notice that. Um, my player health is already set up so that that melee, um, it's got a sword collider on it, and that's taken the life from my player health. And then if he shoots at me too, um, that'll take life as well if the bullet hits me. So um, that's good. Now let's, uh, let's fix our collision problem here so that the enemy isn't pushing me off. We'll start with that one. All right, let's pause this. Now we go back to the enemy himself okay and we have yet another missing script on here and uh, this is a good time for you to kind of look at your character and see how your character is put together uh, let's go back to your player and I know from the very beginning kind of the basic stuff that we've got is you have um, on your player you traditionally have uh, one main collider that's on your character Okay, and if you only have one collider that's on your character, you're going to use only one ignore collision script. Now, I've uh, messed around with my character a little bit so that he can slide under stuff and different things like that, and that necessitated me having two colliders. If your player has uh, two colliders, you're going to do this just a little bit differently. Okay, but for those of you that have one, let's look at that issue right now. Go back down to the enemy, and... Uh, Click on the enemy, and we're going to say, okay, let's uh, ignore collision, 
and uh, that that script is one of the new ones that you brought in. You've got an ignore collision and an ignore collision two. Okay, so we're gonna start with the ignore collision. For those of you that have only one collider that's on there, and let me scroll down. This is ridiculous to do this. All right, so ignore collision. I'm gonna drag that in for one of my missing scripts on my enemy, just to clear that up. Now the collider that I want to ignore is the one that I'm going to drag in here. So in this case I'm going to grab my player and I'm just scrolling up. I'm going to grab my player and drag the player in here. And right away you can see oh, it's going to ignore my capsule collider. Now if you have only one collider on your player you're good. Now if you've got two you got to get the ignore collision two, drag that script in here and I've got that set up because I do have two colliders and now I'm gonna grab the player again and I'm gonna drag that in here and it's gonna look for the other collider and it's gonna ignore that so now I'm all set up with that let's go ahead and test it out hit play okay so at this point we're testing out the colliders here and um, I've got two colliders again on my player and I've added two ignore collision scripts here. And I'm still getting a collision. Now, here's a, here's one of the things that I figured out. If we take a look, actually, I'm gonna go ahead and get out of here. If we take a look over here, if you are a person that has two colliders that's on your player and you need to ignore both of them from your enemy, you can see that I've got a capsule collider and then it says capsule collider in here again. Now that's problematic because if you look at the player and this may be something you're trying to figure out right now currently is okay I've got a capsule collider and I got a circle collider. This is a pretty I've got a capsule collider and I've got a circle collider and this is a pretty normal format so that uh, you can move over surfaces and angles and all that kind of stuff smoothly. I want to pick up the circle collider. All I'm going to do is I'm going to take it as I'm going to move it up in the list because when you drag this on it's going to pick up the first collider that shows up there. So for that second collision script if I go back down to that select my enemy again um, that's the one that I want to pick up the circle collider. So I'm going to go ahead and grab the player now and drag that in there. And you can see now that I changed the order of which one's first, it's picking up the circle collider. So now when I go back into the game here, we shouldn't have any problems. I should be able to jump up there right away. Okay, and okay, boom, 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 he's shooting, meleeing, and I can run right through him. Okay, no collisions whatsoever. Now, hopefully that's all working for you smoothly. Um, now we need to fix the issue of the... Oh, what do we want to cover now? Yeah, let's cover that. Um, right now, you're not seeing any health. Okay, no health is being taken from your enemy. We don't know if he's taken any damage. Okay, we have no idea what's going on here. If I melee him... We can't see any of that going on either. So let's um, let's fix that. So I'm going to go ahead and get out of here. And now I'm going to go back to the enemy script. And the enemy is not currently taking damage from us because there's no script on here telling him to do so. Okay, so we're going to add a script. We're going to go to add component. And one of the scripts that we downloaded was an enemy health script. All right, this is written specifically for your enemy. We just added that on here. Now, if you look at your prefab of your enemy, um, the one that you dragged into your hierarchy, sorry, um, we're going to drop that down. And there are some things that are in here that we haven't talked about yet. There is an enemy health bar canvas. Okay, now this is the enemy's own personal UI layer. So now if I drop that down, I can see that there's an enemy health bar. Now this enemy health bar is actually a slider, so I'm going to go ahead and drag that down and you can see all the components of a slider. Probably looks very familiar to the health bar that we created earlier for our character. So I'm going to grab the slider which is called enemy health bar and I'm going to drag that into this enemy health script. Okay, this is probably very familiar too because this is what we did with the player health script. I'm going to grab the health text and I'm going to drag that in there now too. Okay, so now that we've got those things in here properly, um, we can go ahead and go back and we can test this out. 
And I hit play, and now you can see right away, oops, I almost ran right off there. Um, right away you can see that now my character has got a UI above him that follows him. Okay, and then uh, we can also see that he's starting to take some damage here. Okay. And he dies as well. So we've got everything good there. Now, just to explain a few things that are working behind the scenes so that you understand what's happening. Your knife and your sword are going to have colliders on them. Okay. Now, the your, your player may not have the uh, sword collider yet, so you'll only be able to shoot your enemy. But in the next tutorial, we'll cover the sword collider. And we'll get that added on there. And actually, you know what? Um... We can go ahead and do the sword collider right now. We can go ahead and tackle that. So you got a fully working situation here. Now, um, first thing you can do is underneath your player, if we were going to go through this, let's go ahead and delete our current sword collider. And I'm going to go ahead and just um, delete this out of here since you don't have that. Now, on player selected, I'm going to go create, and I'm going to create an empty. Okay, This empty I'm going to call sword collider like so. And I'm going to drag that up so that it is a child of my player. Okay. Now we got that sword collider on there and we're going to add something new called an edge collider here. Okay. The edge collider is a pretty slick setup here that you can customize. Um, and now with the edge collider, we know that we've got a melee on our character. Okay. And that melee is going to allow us to take damage here. And you can see it does kind of like a half moon swing here. So one of the best things you might be able to do is for your player, he's got a set, um, he's got a set sprite in the sprite renderer. It might be a good time right now to go ahead and grab one of your melee sprites, like when he's fully extended with his sword, knife, whatever this thing is. It looks like an arrow, to be honest. Um, but when it's fully extended, you might want to grab that so you can design your edge collider. Okay, it's just going to be a lot easier. So now I go back to my sword collider as I'm looking at this a little bit more closely, and I want to edit the collider. Okay, and the collider is way up here on my enemy, so I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to drag that down here and uh, you can see that when you mouse over it it adds on the different points that you need to work with and now we're going to zoom in and show you how this thing works it's pretty slick so I'm going to go out here probably about level with the edge of where my sword is going to be and I'm going to get a nice straight up and down line what we're going to do is we're going to create a half moon shape I'm going to come in from the end just a little bit. I'm going to click and I'm going to drag another point on here. Okay. And uh, I'm going to curl that out. Actually, let's, uh, let's keep that one there. And let's bring this one out. There we go. Like so. And uh, I'm going to do the same thing again. Bring that back. Bring this over here. And let's make like this really primitive D shape looking thing right here. Now what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab at different points here and create a half moon shape. And I drag that all out. Let's go ahead and connect this up like so. And you can decide how far you want that melee to reach. This is all part of your personalization for the game. Um, so I'm bringing that out. And there we go. We got an edge collider. Now this edge collider, if I have it on right now, it's going to be in front of me all the time, and I'm going to run um, run into loads of stuff with it, and that's going to create a problem. So um, for the sword collider, let's go ahead and uncheck that so that it's actually not showing up here. And um, so now I can't see that collider at all. Take that off, and we're going to make it a trigger as well. Okay, It's going to trigger the enemy health to take life away. Now the only way it's going to trigger it is it should have a tag. So I'm going to come up to the tags here. And I've already got this one created. So I'm going to come down to sword and I'm going to put the tag sword. Make sure you put exactly the same thing, capital S for sword in here. And then you add that in here. And then here's the direct 
reference and you don't need to open this I'll just show you what this uh, looks like I'm going to my enemy health script um, if I can find it here and here's what's going on in the enemy health right now there are two things that can take life from you the knife which is your knife um, that is your prefab and then the sword now if you're finding that your knife is not taking life from the um, from the character here we can go back you can double check that first off on the knife there should be several things happening here so on the knife there should be a circle collider that's a trigger okay and that's going to trigger the life to go out of them and then the second part of it is that you should have the tag knife on your prefab and then that's going to take life from him so now if we go ahead and we uh, we test this all out with our sword collider, I'll make sure that we've got that all set up. Um, let's go ahead and hit play. And then we go up here and jump up. Oh, actually, one more thing. Pause. I already know that this isn't going to work. We're going to go back to our player. And in our player script... This is like an Easter egg that I was going to save for later, but we're revealing it now. All right, we got the sword collider, and now what I need to do is I need to drag the sword collider that I created into the player script. So now it's populated with that new sword collider. It knows where it is. Let's go ahead and hit play. That's why I was getting an error message anyway. And we come up. And now with that tag on there, should be able to hit my melee. And you can see that it's taken life when it hits the melee. And then he dies. Okay. And he should disappear after a short while. Now, uh, last thing that we're going to wrap up on here, and then we're going to call it quits, is we're going to go ahead and get the enemy knife so that it's actually moving through the air properly. So let's go ahead and work on that next. Okay, so we're working on getting our enemy to fire, and um, there's a couple things that we got to switch around, um, and I made one mistake in telling you that we were adding the enemy sight script. We added it in the wrong place. So I just, um, when he's shooting, that's what he's actually hitting, and that's creating the problem. Um, so we want to actually go to our enemy in the hierarchy, go to where we dragged on the enemy sight script, and let's go ahead and remove that component. So we're going to take that off of there. Now what we're going to do is we're going to add it back onto the site. So if you don't see that, drop down your enemy and you can see site. And we're going to go ahead and add a component here. And you can just start, type an enemy and we're going to add on site. And now we're going to grab the enemy from the hierarchy, just like we did before, and drag this in here. Now that this is in the right location, we're not going to have a lot of the complications that we had before. Now, in the sight line, there are a couple things that happen. When you melee, obviously it brings up a collider, and that creates a collision with the sight line. And then um, it believes that other things are going on that really aren't and it stops mailing and then it shoots and vice versa so we want to ignore a couple collisions here if you don't have um, these collision scripts on there um, you can easily add them on so we can drag in from our scripts you can go to ignore collision and then drag that in here but we're gonna ignore two collisions here the first one that we're gonna ignore is the side or the um, the sword collider we're going to ignore that, and then we're going to actually ignore the actual sight box as well. So I'm going to drag that in here. So now those things won't be conflicting with one another. All right, now let's go back to our enemy, and let's double check that we have, before we get started here, let's double check that we have our enemy knife prefab dragged in there. Okay, and then let's also double check that on our enemy knife prefab, let's go ahead and click on that, that it actually says enemy knife for our tag. Now I didn't point this out, I don't believe earlier, but you want to double check that this is tagged enemy knife, otherwise it won't be taking life from your player. Okay, if you don't have that tag, it's pretty easy. Just go add tag, and you can create that. Make sure you add it exactly like this, capital E, capital K, no spaces. Okay, and um, I believe now at this point, we're ready to start. Oh, one more thing. 
we're gonna take our sight line because it was interfering with the uh, it was interfering with the the enemy knife when it gets thrown. We're gonna take our sight and we're going to edit that collider so that it looks more like this now. It's a lot higher up. It's thinner and it's out of the way of the actual knife. Now the other thing you can do is let's go ahead and check the knife position. You can see that the knife position is out front here and it's well below the enemy sight line. So that way those two are not interfering with one another because they will cancel each other out. It will also cause the knife to have the explosion before it actually hits your character. Okay, so that should pretty much sum it up. Um, let's go ahead and zoom back out here and see how this is working and hit play. And give this a try here. And we're hopping up here. Boom. All right. And it fires. Okay. And it takes life as well. Okay. And I can fire. And it takes life from him. Okay. And let's make sure that the melee still works. We'll get nice and close here. And he melees and it takes life. Okay. Everything is working now with our enemy. Okay. Um, this has been a tricky one. Uh, to say the least, and I'm sorry for all the changes in the scripts and all that. It's probably the easiest way that we can go about this without doing a whole bunch of coding. Now, um, the only thing I would point out is we did change your player health script, and before I wrap this up, I would just point out that your player health script may have had some elements on it that are no longer in there. For instance, if you had a saw, okay, well, the saw is included in my player health script, the acid is included, the spikes are included. But if you had other things that were taking life from your character, you might want to go back and add those in. Now, the nice thing about that now is you've got a framework here that when you hit the saw and you're not already immortal, um, it's going to take your life. And if you're not immortal already, what's gonna it's gonna do is it's gonna trigger an immortal effect, and you're gonna blink on and off here repeatedly, and then that should actually keep you from taking harm again after that. Okay, so you've got that immortality for just a moment that's happening. Okay, um, so you can add that element on um, just by adding the and immortal part here after whatever it is that you've got tagged, and then by adding these lines right here um, to any of the current things that are taking life from you. So basically you could just copy this and paste it over and then change acid to whatever it is that's taking life from you. Okay, I just wanted to clear that up so that you weren't angry that you lost all of your player health things that you had already tagged um, and so that you're all set. Um, well, this has been Tricky, and thanks again for putting up with all this. Thanks for joining us for another episode of Red Hawk Media. Bye.